Okay, guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, I mean over the top, beautiful day here in the end times in paradise at Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is a Friday afternoon. It is September 1st, 2023, and uh, I think I have a few minutes of privacy uh, here hiding out behind uh, one of the tiny houses that miraculously is not rented tonight here on this gorgeous, it is a September afternoon, it is Friday, September 1st, 2023, as I sit around waiting for this next group of uh, a vacation rental guests to arrive from New York City, baby, which probably means they'll be getting here about midnight. But anyway, uh, as long as I'm sitting here waiting for people to show up when they say they're going to show up, uh, I just want to uh, do a rant about fucking flakes. Motherfucking flakes. And I, I, I'm going to dedicate this rant to my good friend Eric from Maine for no particular reason. Eric from Maine is not a man I consider to be a flake. So I uh, just spoke with Eric on the phone, and uh, so Eric, I look forward to meeting up with you next week in Osama. I really look forward to meeting up with you the next week, and Kevin Shanholzer and some other people. I really look forward to meeting up with you next week. And uh, I fully imagine that I will be meeting up with all three of my buddies uh, because they're not flakes, but uh, they are the exception to the rule. I, so what happened to me yesterday? This has never happened to me ever in the history of being a vacation rental super host is that... Uh, this motherfucker who was supposed to be here last night uh, just never showed up. I got a note from him at 11 o'clock yesterday morning. He lives on Long Island telling me he's trying to get out, blah, 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 but it might be late when he gets there. He hopes that's not going to be a problem. 11 o'clock yesterday morning, never heard from the fucker again. Never heard from him again. Not a peep. I messaged the man, let's see, I sent him four messages on Airbnb. Uh, no response. I called him three times. He never answered the phone, no voicemail, so I left text three times. I emailed him two times. I finally, at 11.20 last night, I called Airbnb <coughs> support and tell him, like, 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 what is my responsibility here? And they said, you have met your end of the deal. Uh, and so they were ready to cancel the dude right then and there. And I said, no. I said, because I'm such a nice guy and because I am a super host who is not a flake, I'm going to give the guy one more hour. So Air, the vacation rental company, uh, they tried to find the guy. They tried to call, text, uh, email him to no avail. We sent him warnings that at 1220, the reservation was going to cancel. I get the money. I have been paid. So it was easy money for me thinking, well, maybe this morning I will get up and have a uh, phone call from him, an email, a message absolutely 
no communication from the guy. He, he writes me at 11 o'clock in the morning, I'm trying to get out of here, see you tonight, never another peep out of this dude. I have no idea if he's dead or alive. My wild guess is that he just got overwhelmed with shit to do and with a little bit of money uh, that he spent that, that he just said fuck it, uh, just blew it off. Probably there was some fight with his girlfriend involved in the middle of all this and uh, they, they, they just blew me off uh, with, without the tiniest courtesy of dropping me a line that they were not coming. <coughs> so I sat here till 12.20 last night uh, waiting for this, for this fucking flight to show up. Never showed up, <coughs> but it was some easy money and I don't even need to change any sheets. So I guess I should be glad for that flake. But uh, anyway, with the, 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 these, these goddamn flakes, and I was just emailing Sandy uh, about flakes, and Sandy Shellis, Sandy's a lot of things, but Sandy is not a flake. Okay, if Sandy Shellis says, makes a plan with you uh, to meet up with you somewhere, she, you can depend on her to, uh, to be where she's going to be, when she's going to be there to do what you had to, planned to do. But Sandy, and, and I find this hard to believe she acted like she did not know the definition of a flake. Uh, how can anybody not know the definition of a flake? So we're going to go over here to Urban Dictionary for any of you flakes or non-flakes. Uh, we're going to read a few options. What is a flake? A flake is someone who makes plans with you, promises to do things with or for you, but can never seem to follow through. When confronted with their behavior, they usually get defensive and run away. And then uh, using this in a sentence, <coughs> Jane promised to go out with me. She never showed up. We made plans for Saturday night and she came up with an excuse why she could not show up. Jane is a flake. Now, at least Jane was a flake who came up with some bullshit excuse why she can't show up. Most of these goddamn flakes like that, like that fucker yesterday, just never, they just, they, they make plans with you, they send you money, and, and then they just never fucking show up. Uh, anybody who has ever uh, tried to buy or sell anything on Craigslist knows what I'm talking about. Any real estate agent sure as shit knows what I'm talking about. But here's a little more uh, in-depth uh, definition of a flake. A flake is somebody who almost never follows through on their word. A true flake will tell you they'll totally come to an event that you put endless effort into organizing up until the day before and then the day of the event they're not showing up nor answering your calls or texts. These type of people are the masterminds at taking advantage of your kindness their constant flaking out on you not only succeeds in blatantly using you for your known kindness. No, when you see people flake on you, it makes you feel bad about yourself, wondering what you did to make them do something like that. Flaking out suddenly says 
my time is more important than your time, or better yet, your time don't mean shit to me. Flakes are unneeded negative energy in your life. It is recommended that you keep contact with these selfish pricks to a bare minimum, if at all. <clears throat> Using flake in a sentence, I have zero tolerance for flakes. Nobody will take advantage of me like that. Yeah, right. And then one more because I really like using flake in a conversation. A flake is someone who says that he or she will hang out with you, but then cancels at the last minute. Or worse, they don't even cancel. They just completely fucking disappear. They ghost on you. They ghost you. They don't answer their fucking phone calls texts, or emails. All right. Someone that you made plans with, but then that person changes here his or her mind when you have been waiting all day. Someone that you plan on meeting, but then that person doesn't hit you back until the next day saying, hi, like everything is all right, or some shit like that. So, uh, this is this, this man talking about his conversation with his former flaky friend or girlfriend, Sarah. This is the conversation at 7 p.m. Sarah, yeah, we can hang out tonight after I get off work at 7 p.m. Me, all right, cool. Just let me know when you want to meet. 8 p.m. Me, what the fuck? Sarah, oh, sorry, we just have been so busy today. Can we hang out next time? Me, no, fuck you, bitch, wasting my goddamn time on you. I hate people that flake. Say something if you can't hang out with me so I can do other shit and not waste my time seeing what's up with you. <laughs> and anyway, I, but, but, you know, there, there's this whole other version of flake that uh, is it, just, and th this has happened to me twice in the past month. And what this version of a flake is, and, and, and I don't even know what you call a person like this. This is, uh, you know, where you are in the process of making plans with somebody. Okay. Then you, so you get in a conversation, usually email or texting, where you make plans. Uh, you're trying to figure out when to get together to make a plan to do something on a specific date and time at a specific place. This is called making plans, what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and where you're going to do it. Uh, so you get in the process of just trying to make the plan, and then the, the, the flake just drops the ball. So like the flake will initiate the conversation and say, let's, uh, hey, Emma, let's get together, uh, trying to figure out when a good time is to get together. And then you say, well, I, I would love to get together with you too. Here is what works best for me. These days work the best. These days don't, whatever. So you throw out a suggestion of a time and a place to get together. And then the person who initiated the conversation disappears off the face of the planet. 
So they email you, let's get together, when's a good time? You email them back, great, let's get together. How about this date, time, and place? Total silence. So one day goes by, two days goes by, three days go by. On the fourth day, you email them. So, what do you think about the plan I suggested? Total silence. Fifth day, you email them again. So, what do you think about the plans I suggested? Total, complete fucking silence. Seventh day, email them. What do you think about the plans I suggested? Total silence. Eighth day, you text them. Text them. Read your fucking emails. Let me know what you think about the, the plans I suggested, the date and time. So now they have three emails, which were a response to their initial email and a text on their phone. Total silence. Day 10, you just pick up the fucking phone, which is what you should have done uh, on the very first time they didn't respond back to your email. Pick up the fucking telephone, have a conversation with the person, and make the plan. Let's do this on this date at this location. Okay? So, at least you now have a plan, and then you can wait around to see if they're going to fucking show up or not. And uh, I've, I've had similar stories to this twice. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and... Uh, like, last week, uh, I called my buddy who lives in Long Island and said, call him on the phone. Hey, mom, what's going on? I say, well, uh, we've been batting around getting together after Labor Day. These are the nights that would work best for me. What do you think, brother? Sounds good to me, Hambone. Hambone. I'm going to pencil you in for those two dates. So, uh, right now, uh, how many plans have I? I have plans with how many of my friends right now. Uh, and since I try not to hang out with flakes, I, I'm assuming that every one of them will, uh, will, will happen as planned, but uh, the, 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 these motherfucking flakes, it's just, it's just so fucking rude, you know, and, there, and, there, and there's all of these different goddamn flavors of flakes, like I, I've had a couple of these rants recently, you know, just about these clueless fucking morons, and we all do it. Uh, I'm not as guilty as most people, but I'm guilty myself. It's called thinking out loud. It's the this very dangerous activity when you when you're thinking out loud about some fucking plan, some general plan that you're making uh, that doesn't you know it's not really where you're down to a specific date and time and place. Just generally, uh, people talking out, they're fucking assholes, uh, uh, having no, no uh, realistic chance that they're ever going to do, but they're talking out their ass. This is why, uh, you know, even with my close friends, when it's just some general vague thing, 
about what they're going to do in the future, obviously, the farther out into the future. It goes in one ear and out the other. I say, that sounds like a great plan. Hope it works out for you. And, but it doesn't really concern you. But then you have the next level of flake. And I am guessing... I have had 20 people, 20 people, mostly my clueless, lovable friends in Austin, Texas, tell me that they are coming up to see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm this summer. You know, just this vague, oh yeah. You know, it's 110 fucking degrees for five months in Austin, Texas. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm going to make it up there and uh, come check out that place of yours uh, this year. Uh, see you this summer. And then, of course, uh, you know, talking out of the rest. So I have had two of my friends from Austin, Texas actually show up here out of the 20 or so. Austin, Texas and other towns that I don't need. So it's just this general... I'm going to come see you sometime over the next six months. Talking out their ass, they have no intention of following through on that plan. And uh, so that's a little bit more irritating than just the general talking out your ass. When someone looks at you and says, I am going to do something I'm going to make a plan with you sometime in the next six months. And then life happens. You, you know, life is what happens when you're making plans. Uh, so you can't get too pissed off at people like that. But then you have, but, but, but then I guess you, 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 you well, there's four kinds of flakes. And then there's the, the, this new kind of flake that I just talked about where someone really does want to make a specific plan or they act like they do and then they just disappear on you until it's up to you to you know track them down uh, so we have that flag and then of course we have uh you know the the, the motherfucking flakes that we're that we're all talking about which the definition and the Urban Dictionary, and, and, and that's these, these motherfuckers who, uh, they're, 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 there's nothing vague about it. It's not sitting there thinking out loud. It's not some vague thing, I'll come see you at some point in the next six months. You, you, you know, it's a, it's, it's a fucking commitment that you make with somebody. You, you know, a friend of yours. I will be at this location on this date to do this with you. Or I will uh, have some project. Uh, yeah, and, and, you know, uh, I promise you in the next three months that I will make this happen in your life. I, there, there, there's that version. And then, of course three months turns into three years and uh, you, you just call somebody else uh, but we, we all know the, the, the kind of fucking flake I'm talking about and uh, <clears throat> you know I just wasn't raised that way maybe it's because I'm a Virgo uh, you know this is the reason that I am a super host, a vacation rental super host, is that I'm not a fucking flake. Uh, if I tell you <clears throat> that if we, if you make a plan with me and Hambone Little Tail tells you I will see you on this date at this location to make this happen, you can pretty much take it to the bank. Am I going to say it's never happened in my entire life that I flaked on 
that I've never flaked on somebody. Of course not. But for me to flake on somebody, you know, it, it, it has to be something, you know what I'm saying. Uh, it, it, it has to be a real shit happens. It's not, if, if, if I make plans with somebody and then I regret e either making plans with them or making a promise to, to do a favor for somebody and then uh, something intervenes that a better offer comes along than the one that I had made, I honestly think that I have the class that I don't just fuck my friends over uh, if, if, if something better comes along. Uh, it, it's just, it's just not the way, you, you, you don't even treat a fucking total stranger that way, dude. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's just not fucking cool. Uh, it, it, it's farting in somebody's face. It's, it, it, it's as that says, uh, your time, uh, doesn't mean shit to me. Uh... And I, I, it's, it's just weird. Like I, you know, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, born in 1959, raised by a, a very non-flake mother. I mean, it was instilled in the five of us that uh, you make a, a, a plan uh, with someone you don't just flake out on them. My mother had zero tolerance policy for, for fucking flakes. Zero tolerance policy for it. And, it. and I never really encountered serious flakes until I got to California. Uh, you know, my dear, sweet, late, great ex-wife and I, who was a lot of things, but she was not a flake. Caroline was not a flake. I wasn't a flake. She wasn't a flake. It's one of the things that uh, attracted me to her because she wasn't a fucking flake. If, if she said she was going to do something with you at a particular date and time uh, and place, she would be there. But we moved to fucking California, and, it, and it's unbelievable moving from Atlanta, Georgia to Santa Cruz, California, uh, the, 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 the single flakiest fucking town on this planet. And uh, so our best friends, uh, Billy Bob and Lulu, I've told this story, and, and, and I'm going to tell it one more time because it's germane to this rant. They were the flakiest motherfuckers that either one of us ha had ever met. Over and over and over and over again, we would make plans... Uh, with Billy Bob and Lulu, it was usually to go camping somewhere that we're going to meet them at a particular campsite on the beach or up in the Redwoods, whatever, that uh, we're heading to this campsite this weekend. And they said, oh yeah, we'll uh, meet up there. And then they would just never fucking show up. Now, this was in the days before cell phones and email. There was no texting, no email. So it's like, you, you know, we would make a conversation, we would make a plan over the phone, and, and then we were off out in the woods, and they would just never show up. It, it, it happened over and over and over again. And, and, and then... Uh, as it says in this thing here, then we, we would see them the next week. And and they would just they, they would they would make no apology. It was that they they didn't consider being flakes uh, a, a a particularly unattractive personality or friendship trait. I mean, uh, Lulu ended up being the mayor of the town, okay? We're not talking people 
that you generally in 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 you know they 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 had uh, regular jobs. They were homeowners. You know what I'm saying. And and then they were just the the just total fucking flakes. That uh, they something better would come along, or they just at the last minute, just I don't have the energy for it, and so uh, they they just wouldn't show up. And then they, I mean, no fucking apology, no explanation, and, and uh, but anyway, we we kept the friendship alive, and so after we had gotten divorced, so this was back in nineteen. 19- this would have been in uh, 1991. We had, I had known this couple for uh, eight years, and I, and again, so this was 91. So this was back before the days of email and uh, cell phones and texting. And I was heading to Costa Rica. I was driving a beat up old car to Costa Rica. I, I left Eugene, Oregon. I stopped to spend a couple of days at their place in Mendocino, California, uh, driving this beat-up old car to Costa Rica. And then uh, it was going to be my buddy Billy Bob's 30th birthday, and he gets this wild hair to have his 30th birthday party in Costa Rica on the beach that he wants to eat lobster on a beach in Costa Rica for his 30th birthday party. And I said, no problem. Uh, I I said, I will pick you up at the airport in this beat-up old car, take you to a beautiful beach, and we will have lobster to eat for your 30th birthday And uh, so this was in November, so obviously I stuck around and waited for them. So they buy the plane tickets, Uh, so I have, you know, their flight information, the date, time, location of when they were flying in in February. This was November of 91. They were flying in February of 1992, December three months, and I had no contact with them for the next three months. No email, no texting, nothing. I had zero contact with uh, these flaky fucking friends of mine uh, who who couldn't keep a goddamn uh, promise to me for, for three days, much less three months without fucking me over. And when they were you know, getting ready to land in into in uh, San Jose, Costa Rica. Lulu was on and it was going into freak out mode, telling Billy Bob there is no fucking way that Hambone is, is going to be waiting for us at that gate. Ain't gonna happen. She was already uh, making plans to rent a fucking car. I uh, haven't heard from the guy in three months. There's no fucking way that Hambone is going to be at that goddamn gate. And Billy Bob said he looked at her and said, Darling, if it was anybody on this planet, anybody on this planet other than Hambone, you are right. There's no fucking way they're going to be at that airport. But if Hambone Little Tail tells you in November that he will pick you up at the airport in San Jose, Costa Rica at a certain hour and a certain day, he will be there. He is not a fucking flake. Oh, Jesus. I I, I just don't fucking uh, understand. Uh, how, how how people uh, can it can be so goddamn flaky, you know, and, and especially this shit. You, you, you know, when you're just trying to make plans with somebody, especially if you initiate the conversation. I want to make a plan with you. When when's a good when's a good uh, date? 
and then the person you email somebody I want to make plans when's a good date and the person emails you back when a good date would be it's not that fucking hard to check your motherfucking emails or or, or your text well it's hard for me to check my text don't ever text me email me for all I know I have 500 texts uh, on my fucking cell phone uh, I don't I don't do texting I just, I, I just don't do texting. But it, it's not that fucking hard uh, to, to, to check your goddamn email. It, it really isn't. It, it, it just, uh, good fucking God. Goddamn flake. So here I am again, waiting for, for somebody to come in from the city. But they, they're, they're here for two nights. I don't give a fuck. Uh, if, if, if they show up or not, they can show up tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, guys, come on. Don't treat your friends that way. It's just not fucking cool. All right. So Eric, Osama, Kevin, Karen... I will be seeing you shortly. You know when and you know where. Come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Send me an email and we will figure it out. Okay, you little flaky dog. This dog is a flake. I have a flaky dog. Are you a flaky dog or not? He is a flake. You make a plan with this dog. You make a plan with this dog right here. And a goddamn chipmunk uh, runs across his field of vision. You can throw your fucking plans out the window. Is that right or not, Sancho Banzo? Are you a flake or not? Yeah, I see that guilty face. Bye, guys.